In my opinion, the best way to deal with the ambiguous case, one, two, or no triangles, is to work with the height of your oblique triangle. I first always like to draw my triangle to look like this. This is the best and easiest way for me to be able to understand visually what exactly the ambiguous case looks like. So if I had some angles here, let's say 30 degrees, let's say six, and let's say seven, how can I identify quickly what exactly, how many cases, one, two, or none, that this triangle is going to be? Well, that all comes into knowing the height. So if I draw a nice perpendicular line here, I create a right triangle. I can now say, if this is H, that the sine of 30 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, height is equal to seven times the sine of 30 degrees. And hopefully you know that sine of 30 degrees is going to be one half. One half times seven is going to be a 3.5. So how can I now use this information to help me understand what exactly is going on here? So here's the key things. If instead of this being six, what if this was a three? Now I would have no solution because whenever you're, let's say call this an A, this is little a and let's call this C. Whenever your C is less than H, you have no triangle. Why would that make sense? Well, if this is 3.5 and this is three, then that's gonna be shorter. Right? And so therefore, no matter how far I rotate this around, it's never actually going to create a triangle. Now, what about if this was 13? Well, this would be so big, it'd be like way over here outside of the frame of the video. And, but what I want you to understand is, if I swing this around any way that I want to, or let's even put it like right in there, it's only gonna make one triangle. So when my A is larger than my C, we're gonna have one triangle. Now, obviously, if my A was equal to my H, that means my A was actually a 3.5, then it would be the height of the triangle and I would have a right triangle. So when A equals your H, I'm going to have a one right triangle. Now, what about where the ambiguous case comes in for two solutions? This is the one that always, do, always confuses students. So what we know is that my last value here, so we know H is going to be 3.5 it has to be bigger than the height for the triangle to exist. We got that. But now we're at six, okay? And however, six is less than seven. So whenever my A is going to be less than my adjacent side, but it's gonna be larger than my height, I am going to have two solutions or two cases. Because now this triangle can look like this. This side can rotate to create another triangle which would be right here. So if this is my small side C, this would be my big side angle C1, and this would be my angle C2. And that's where people hate the ambiguous case because now we don't have enough information to know which triangle is which, so we need to be able to solve for both triangles.